Michael Sykes ensured that Flash Racing would have the Delano Pole Award for the second straight week. His teammate Leonard Roderick won the pole in Quincy. The uh, New York Street Race that was mentioned during the pre-race for the round of Quincy is now official. There will be a TM Master Cup Series race on the streets of New York and it will be a penultimate event. There's one catch. It'll be open only to teams that boycotted the round of Michigan. I believe this is some sort of way for the uh, Michelin Suns and Majestic Motorsports and Black Diamond Racing to find their way back onto the grid uh, for next season as they uh, at present don't have a provisional entry. So, this means that we have only 14 cars for the uh, round of New York. It will be the penultimate race of the season. Well, it has generated quite a bit of controversy. Speaking of controversy, four cars were sent to the back of the grid for their, some of their actions in Quincy. Luciano Savarol, car number three, uh, the winner of the round of Quincy, incidentally enough, was uh, tossed to the back of the grid along with Packer Carroll after an incident he had with Ryan Matthews. Zelda Ashby was also tossed to the back of the grid, and Ryan Matthews, car number 11, also found himself a uh, drop to the back of the grid after he had an incident with Anthony Griffith. Uh, during the round of Quincy, which uh, didn't exactly leave uh, Griffith too happy, if I understand things right. Speaking of Griffith, this is his last race for Power Sting Incorporated. We believe he'll move over to Team Thunder and that Scott Stoyler will take his place. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Scott Bates was the only car to be within half a second of Michael Sykes in the 44 car in qualifying. So car number 88 is uh, looking pretty good today. Melanie Cleveno, car number 74, making a pretty ambitious move into one. Uh, thinks better of it. Nasova, though, goes for it in car number 8, and, uh, well, Arto Kekin in that 9 car also looks like he got a pretty good start. And that red 31 car is Matt Taylor, the 04 champion. We'll get to why he's in that car, uh, instead of Craig Mummer later. Anyway, Cleveno in car number 74 has uh, had a pretty good season in her, uh, limited starts. Here's Leonid Roderick, car number four, going three wide into turn five on the first lap. B. Roderick makes a dive, and he's gonna make it stick. That's Matthias Taub in that blue number 10. And uh, right behind him is Kevin Dwyer in the 72, who had a great qualifying run, and he's battling with his teammate Blake Camphouse in the 15 car. Uh, anyway, here's something that our eyes will all be thankful of. The livery on the 126 car for Cameron Taylor has been changed, and it's actually a rather nice-looking piece now. Cameron Taylor has finally decided, uh, at least Cameron Taylor and his team have decided to stop torturing our retina and have decided to bring a very, very nice looking uh, maroon car there. Number 126, he's an independent trophy car. Anthony Griffith, car number 08, had a couple of offs in qualifying. He started way in the back. This is his last race for PSI. He is flying to the front of the field in that 08 car. Talk about bravery, Anthony Griffith in this race is just personifying it. This car was very, very fast in all the practice sessions, and I was uh, kind of disappointed when he didn't qualify towards the front of the field. Uh, we'll see you later that Anthony Griffith uh, has not had uh, very good relations with Kirk Pliskin. And here's Luciano Savarol, who was sent to the back of the grid. He would have started third if he didn't have uh, that grid penalty, so Savarol, I think, is uh, definitely going to be paying for it here. You see um, Ryan Matthews, the 10 car, Zelda Ashby, the 55. They've all gotten around the two Tutinos, who are... Uh, well, not unsurprisingly, still in the back. Jose Luis Martinez is in the car, in the number seven car. He just ran way wide, came back on the track, and uh, whoa! I'm not sure if he made contact with Dale Roswell, or if he just um, if he got there was contact with the 22 car, or if no, I think no. It looks like the seven car may have just gotten on the power too quickly, coming off turn uh, three there, and uh, he just looped it around like that, coming off turn two. Excuse me. Tyson Lautenschlager is back with Tutino for this race and for Indianapolis, and he's, not surprisingly, running at the back. Uh, Tutino choosing Lautenschlager may seem a bit out of left field, but remember, Tutino scored their first points here last year, and Lautenschlager was the driver. So it looks like that may not have been uh, entirely decided by money this time. It looks like Tutino getting a bit smarter with their driver choices. However, Lautenschlager is finding um, this a bit of a difficult weekend. Uh, Granted, he's not driving regularly in this series, so um, we'll have to see about that. Anyway, here's Anthony Griffith. Uh, see about how he does in this race. Anyway, here's Anthony Griffith in the 08 car, 24th place on lap two. He's hell bent, unflung through the field. Got around Tom Delgado. Wow, Delgado did not fight that at all. And that is Lewis Kingston directly in front of him. And I'm surprised he was able to get around Ian Cooper pretty quickly, as he saw on lap. Oh, Kingston into the into the sand there. So. Griffith applies the pressure, Kingston cracks under it, and around goes the 08 car. He's going to try to go on the outside. Cooper's going to stick his nose in there if he can. We have, could have three wide coming in. No, Cooper thinks better about it. Griffith goes through. 
Tom Delgado reported a misfire on the start of the race, it looks like, so the 37 car has uh, been having some difficulties all, all, uh, all race long so far. Uh, he's dropping through the back of the field, so I wouldn't be surprised if he... Oh, yeah, Tom, he's definitely got a problem. Tom Delgado is in trouble. This 37 car, and he almost wipes out Ryan Matthews and Tyson Lounschlager, who has uh, really didn't have many options there but to run straight in the back of him, as you see right there. Uh, we're not sure if he'll be back in this car next year. Uh, Yamino Tenshi and Chris Johans could both uh, take over this car. And whoa, Adrian Devereaux to almost visits the sand over there in the last corner. Uh, this car is not handling very well. In fact, uh, both of the um, Altairs that were pretty slow in final practice, although Savaral was pretty quick in qualifying. Uh, Devereaux is not very happy with the handling on this race car, and uh, to say he let his team know would be an understatement. I think he let, let his team know uh, many, many times, and he's currently being a bit of a roadblock at the moment. Leonid Roderick in the number four car. Whoa, slides wide. This car is not handling very well either. It looks like everyone but the Gesslers. Uh, Anthony Griffith and Michael Sykes are just skating around out there because Taub in that 10 car not having any handling problems at all uh, around this track. And he just flies by Roderick. A lot of low downforce setups, looks like. The uh, number 15 car is Blake Kamphausen. He's had a pretty good qualifying run, but uh, looks like a puncture in that car on car number 15 is going to make him uh, change his pit strategy pretty early in the race. And he's have to come in for his first stop a lot earlier than he expected, and that's too bad because this is the best run I've seen out of Blake Kamphausen, uh, I think, all season. Arto Kekin in car number nine appears to be the only car that can challenge Michael Sykes. He's made an art form, has Arto Kekin, out of using few words as possible in his interviews. Uh, not the most talkative person on the camera. He lets uh, his driving do his talking for him, and whoa, goes a bit wide there in that nine car, but, um, uh, if Arto Kekkonen let his driving do his talking for him, he'd uh, about have as much to say as I do about him. So anyway, Arto Kekkonen, this 9 car, is pretty quick in practice, not one of the fastest cars, and it's a bit of a surprise to see him this quick in the race. Looks like Gessler might have been hiding something until the race, which is when it matters the most, incidentally enough. Here's Scott Bates. He did a Houdini magic trick on the start, and he just disappeared. Uh, he's reappeared uh, all in fifth place, and... Uh, there's uh, Adrian Devereaux there, who's been learning from the Ian Cooper School of Blocking in the number one car, and he's sort of been jamming everybody up, Devereaux, and that one car being very, very wide. However, it looks like Devereaux might be uh, strategically doing that, because uh, if he does a hatchet job on everyone else's race, that might help him out, especially if he happens to be saving fuel, which uh, could make life uh, for Scott Bates, Chris Hans back there uh, quite miserable, uh, especially when uh, that number one car of Adrian Devereaux is able to save fuel. He, he's one of the best at it. Uh, Devereaux could have a much quicker pit stop and could actually gain quite a bit of track position on these two cars. So uh, I think Scott Bates may want to be uh, a little bit cautious there, especially when he's got Chris Johans breathing down his neck. So uh, that 64 car of Johans, he will definitely give you the chrome horn, but then again, I think Scott Bates might think about doing that too if uh, Chris Johans decided to... Whoa! 64 car went wide! And there you see, he just lost a couple of positions back there to, uh, looks like, Talvin Roderick. There we see, here goes 64. He just hit the brakes way too late. Um, and there you see Talvin Roderick go right on by. That orange number four, Leonard Roderick, four times. He hoisted the TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship. Chris Johans, twice an Arla champion, and uh, he's actually came one point short of winning the title last year. He's had a pretty lackluster year so far, but lately he's really turned it around. Roderick is going side by side with Chris Johans down the front straightaway, and he's going to take back eighth place. There he goes around car number 64, down into turn two. Uh, down the, turn three, I believe. Excuse me. Anyway. Roderick clears the 64 car of Chris Johans. Kevin Dwyer is running in 10th place on lap 6. Team Star USA has had a real struggle with this Sar Eagle, and it's good to see Kevin Dwyer running inside the top 10 on pure speed, uh, believe it or not. So this 72 car has uh, had a pretty tumultuous season. Uh, he's had a lot of things go wrong uh, during the race, incidents, mechanical problems out of his control. Uh, Team Star USA has had a... Uh, well, they've had a lot of problems up in the past couple seasons, but Team Star USA won this race last year with Mike Whitmore at the wheel. And uh, Kevin Dwyer is hoping to emulate that success. He's uh, still in 10th place. We're on lap 6. All right, Matt Taylor is in this 31 car, and that's because Craig Mummert was uh, suspended after um, deciding to go bowling in the pits and uh, hurt quite a few crew members in uh, during the round of Quincy. Everyone's back here for this week, but uh, the 04 Titleist 
is running in 16th place. He's gotten more speed out of the James Dalton Blackbird than either Craig Moment or Charlie Waters has been able to uh, so far this season, so that's not making either of them look too good. Uh, Taylor has been pretty impressive in his uh, lone TM light showing this year. He's back up to the Cup Series for this race in this 31 car, and he'll be in this car at Indianapolis. And then, uh, I don't think he will be back in this 31 car. I think Taylor is in here only to evaluate how good the team is doing so far. Morgan Hamburg is an independent trophy driver in this race in the MRD car, running in 30th place. Team owner Tom Delgado has thrown a lot of cash at this team, and they've had no results or pace at all this season. That's rather unfortunate. Arto Kekin continuing to put the pressure on Michael Sykes, but Sykes is not making any errors. Actually, I've seen more errors from that 9 car than Michael Sykes in the 44, so um, looks like Sykes might just be uh, sort of cruising his way home. Now, Michael Sykes has raced here before in many different categories. Back here with Adrian Devereaux in uh, car number 1. He and Melanie Cleveno are not able to catch the 44 and the 9. Uh, either that or they've both gone into fuel-saving mode, and as I mentioned earlier, Adrian Devereaux is pretty good at saving fuel and gaining a lot of track position in the pit lane that way. Uh, Melanie Cleveno in that uh, 74 car, not sure how good she is at that. Luciano Salverall, the championship leader, is up to 19th place from 33rd in the grid. As he goes around Cameron Taylor, as a couple of cars head into the pit lane. I saw Matt Taylor and Marcus Leonard, Lewis Kingston is in. And Zach Duff, Kevin Dwyer is in. Our first pit stops are beginning now. We're on the end of lap eight. Uh, looks like most of the people that were pitting were in the lower points of the back of the field. The exception being the 88 car of Scott Bates, who is in the pits. There's Marcus Leonard in the triple nine car. There's Scott Stoyler in the 50 car. Now he was a—he's uh, been having uh, getting pretty good gas mileage in that Tutino, according to him. Anyway, here is Scott Bates in the 88 car as he just pits. Uh, Michael Sykes and Arto Kekkonen, as you see, if begin to pull out a pretty big lead on Adrian Devera and Melanie Cleveno, and they in turn have a pretty big gap on everyone else. So, looks like already it's going to be a four-horse race for the win, unless all four of these cars somehow manage to fail to finish. Uh, stranger things have happened in this series. Kekkonen and Michael Sykes you know, are still sort of setting the pace to be pretty fast, and uh, Michael Sykes is going to pit on lap nine. Adrian, uh, excuse me, Arto Kekkonen follows him in. Melanie Cleveno, uh, it comes in on lap 9. That's a little bit uh, earlier than I expected that 74 car to come in. Adrian Devereaux is not taking chances either, and it looks like he's just going to race the 74. Matthias Taub, Leonard Roderick, and Chris Johans also in on lap 9. So, we'll have to see how everything else goes. Ah, looks like Kurt Pliskin is in, as well as Davina Henton in car number 6. The other uh, Lynx Volpe is in. Michael Sykes extended his lead in that pit stop, so uh, I wonder if Sykes has been saving more fuel than Kekkonen was, or, which is most likely the case, he just had a faster pit stop. And Melanie Cleveno is now on the back bumper of the uh, nine car. Oh, no, wait, no, she's not. Something must happen to Cleveno. She must have uh, just uh, gotten a very slow um, uh, exit to the pit lane. And car number 11, Ryan Matthews, was reporting problems after his pit stop, and those were apparently terminal. The number 11 car lets out a pretty big cloud of smoke. And he's going to pull it off the course in turn one, and that's his day done and dusted. However, to be fair, Ryan Matthews was probably not going to score points with the way he, the rate he was going. He wasn't having a particularly good weekend anyway. Anyways, back up to Michael Sykes in car number 44. There are 11 laps complete, and he's led all 11 of them. Michael Sykes is uh, at this rate. He'll be going for a perfect 70. He's got uh, that nine car, Arto Kekkonen, right behind him. And, uh, well, Michael Sykes, if he does get a perfect 70, that'll only be the fourth time that's happened. Or, was that the third time that's happened? I believe the third. Anyway, Brandon LaRoe in car number 24 is running in 21st place. He leads the Independent Trophy cars, but we got a pretty big pack right here. Of uh, We got a pretty good race going on here, right in the lower points and the midfield area. Packer Carroll in the two car. Dale Roswell, the Freedom for Palestine car. We're on board with Carroll. As you see, the uh, Brandon's Chair Repair logos all over that 24 car. They just decided uh, to put their one, one of their primary sponsors in just about every placeable surface on that car, uh, much to our amusement. We'll have to see if other teams don't uh, try something like that with a primary sponsor. We'll uh, see how that goes. Pa uh, Packer Carroll in the number two car, though, is drag racing with Peter Short, the four-time Formula A champion in the 19 car. But Peter Short's able to hold Carroll off. Carroll looks like he slid the car in the kink now. That was some pretty good car control right there from Packer Carroll as he's trying to hold off. That is Cameron Taylor, Brandon LaRoe, right behind him, Lewis Kingston coming into the picture now. 
as we come into Canada Corner, turn 12, as Carroll sliding the rear end of that car. Packer Carroll's car is way too loose, I think, for his liking. Cameron Taylor coming around the outside in the 126 car. Cameron Taylor having a very good showing in this 126 car. Uh, we kind of bagged him earlier in the year for uh, sort of lucking into results, and now he's showing us some pure speed, and it's pretty impressive, actually, from the Ohio native, Cameron Taylor. Lycoya is main man. Greg Woodard is running back in 28th place. Uh, the first half of the race has not gone too well for the Lycoyas, but uh, or the lone Lycoya in the race, rather. But uh, Woodard is apparently, oh, he's right behind this huge pack, this huge gaggle of cars, and looks like he might be able to pick them off one by one, because this 41 car appears to be, uh, well, we'll have to see how he's able to do on tires. Apparently this team may have learned its lesson from Carbondale when they were beaten on tire wear by Adrian Devereaux and probably could have won that race. Anyway, round board with Yulia Nasova back up in ninth place. That's Leonid Roderick right there. Right in front of them is Davina Henton in car number six. Nasova uh, doesn't quite... Oh, Nasova gets that car a bit sideways. Roderick's going to be able to pull away just a little bit in the four car. Adrian Devereaux's in trouble. The, uh, the man who almost won this race last year but for contact late in the race with Chris Johans got himself a time penalty, crossed the line first, but was demoted back to second is going to have to pit for, I believe, a puncture on car number one. So Adrian Devereaux had a pretty good day going, but uh, that's going south quite quickly. Kurt Pliskin's running up in fifth place, and this car is really beginning to slide around on him. A lot of cars have really been having handling difficulties, but the 16 car still appears to be sliding around quite a bit. Whoa! And he is definitely backing up in that 16 car. Power Sting Incorporated, at least the 16 car, has been getting some pretty good pit work in the past couple of races. Uh, the sister car, the 08 of Anthony Griffith, hasn't, and that's what sort of spawned half of the uh, old Pliskin uh, Griffith saga. Here comes Scott Bates in the 88 car around Pliskin. So uh, apparently, this car, the 16, not handling too well. Bates' car appears to be handling very well now in uh, that 88 car. The Team EFR car is both running fairly well. I saw Ian Cooper in the background just a while ago. Here is Davina Henton fending off Leonid Roderick for the moment. Roderick still there. Pretty good racing going on back in the field. It's a shame we don't have, to have this kind of racing up at the front of the pack. But anyway, uh, as Roderick slides back in the line, blocks Nasova in car number eight. Michael Sykes is still leading on lap 15, and Arto Kakinen's not able to catch him. Michael Sykes uh, won in Russia earlier in the year when uh, saving fuel was uh, fuel mileage was sort of the uh, main key of the day over there. And here is Yamino Tenshi in car number 25, having a very solid run inside the top 10, and well up, well smooth run up until right there, or she almost put it off into the sand trap. Go make a sand castle. Not the object here. Let's uh, focus on uh, getting as best result that we can. Yulina Sova is into the pit lane. Car number 8. I think this is a bit early. Blake Camphausen in the 15 car, though, pulls into the pits, and his day appears to be done, because uh, Camphausen was reporting some electrical problems in that 15 car, and uh, they were not able to fix it in time. The uh, Team Star USA tried to fix that car, but they weren't able to. Camphausen out of the race. Scott Bates comes in for a second stop on lap 16. Matthias Taub, Kurt Pliskin, Ian Cooper, and Kevin Dwyer on lap 17. <clears throat> and there you see Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car, the Lone Ranger uh, Tenere. Right in the background, you see Kevin Dwyer coming into the pits in this uh, Royal Blue 72. Leonard Roderick is still battling Davina Henton, but oh, they're they're both doing pretty soon. This might be an in lap for both of them, and uh, I think Roderick may have given Henton a shot there to get her out of the way, but it doesn't look like that was the intent. It looks like that was just uh, see Roderick makes the dive. Oh, Henton's car was out of shape anyway, so if Roderick t uh, got into Henton, it was very very slight contact. Melanie Cleveno, a solid third. Um, she's been having pretty good uh, pretty good runs on this car, but oh, we've got problems at the 74. Melanie Cleveno, something is either broken on that car or she has run that car almost out of fuel. Uh, Melanie Cleveno is still on the racing line. She's not pulling off, so that suggests that she might have run this car out of fuel. Roderick's right there. Cleveno not moving out of the way. Now she sees him and she lets him go by. Uh, the Swiss driver having has had a pretty uh, has had some pretty stellar pace so far in this series, and she's holding up Davina Henton now. Uh, coming out of the carousel might be a better pull. Looks like she might give Henton the uh, left side in the car number six. Oh, there's contact! Cleveno goes around! Melanie Cleveno goes around! There was contact between the 74 and the six. Look out, look out! Oh, Tenchi's in there! 
Probably the fastest part of the racetrack, and Henton turns the 74 car around, but to be fair, the 74 was in trouble and uh, just sort of chopped off Davina Henton. Clevino came over the radio and said she had no idea Davina Henton was coming through on the left side. On the left side, and she was going to give Henton room coming into the kink, but, uh, well, apparently Henton wasn't really in the mood to lift off. Uh, off the throttle, the, uh, the stewards did not give Henton a penalty for this, even though it did take Yamino Tenchi and Melanie Cleveno out of the race. Tenchi in the 25 car, that's a huge disappointment for her. It was a pretty good run going for the Japanese driver, and that all went up in, uh, well, smoke. Michael Sykes came in on lap 18, right as this chaos was happening behind him, and Arto Kekkonen in the 9. Leonard Roderick in car number uh, 4 came in on lap 18 as well. Uh, his crew told him they saw Henton go out of the race so that he wouldn't have as much to worry about. Chris Johans in the 64 also came in. Marcus Leonard in car number triple 9 is running a little further back in the field. He might have gotten tapped by Scott Soiler coming into Canada corner, but I'm not sure if if that must just must have been very slight contact either that or Leonard must have just put on the power to uh, put on the power to art and spun it around into the tire wall and he goes out of the race uh, Scott Stoidler and uh, that incident was not under review we're being told so there will not be a penalty for Scott Stoidler in any way shape or form so apparently that uh, Zach Duff in car number five in trouble so uh, Duff had a pretty good run going in this five Xena. Number five Xenos didn't mention him all day, unfortunately. The dilated paint scar has sort of had a rocky year, and he goes out of the race. But as I was saying earlier, there is no penalty coming for Scott Stoiler in the 50 car. Michael Sykes in car number 44 is leading the race. Uh, still, Arto Kekkonen a bit of a bit of a ways back. Looks like the 44 crew is able to give Sykes enough of an advantage to where he doesn't have to worry about Arto Kekkonen running him down. Here's a hell of a run by Anthony Griffin in this 08 car, considering that uh, that uh, Power Sting Incorporated has sort of been uh, giving Kurt Pliskin all the really good equipment over there at uh, Griffith's expense. Now, it'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to see this better when we come by the front straight away, but you might notice that the front ends on both cars are significantly different. And um, I don't see how uh, this is benefiting Anthony Griffith at all. This will make Griffith... Uh, the uh, his grills in the front end are wider, which will make that car slower in the straightaways. But as you can see, he got a better run off the final corner than Kurt Pliskin did. And Anthony Griffith really got a good run there. Griffith coming by on the inside. He's going to pass his team leader. Oh, not quite. Pliskin fights back. I really don't think Pliskin's pride can handle getting beaten by Anthony Griffith in Griffith's last race with that team. Oh, I think Griffith is going to get it. Uh, he doesn't quite have Pliskin cleared. Yes, he does. Anthony Griffith goes through. In the Tonnerre Surge, the uh, car that was partially designed by Power Sting Incorporated, and Tonnerre is mostly just providing the engines there, we believe. Luciano Savarol is the quickest car on the track, aside from Arto Kakinen and Michael Sykes. He's up to 19th place. He's sort of been floating around there for a while. He's working on Brandon Leroux in the 24 car. The afterburner ride is... He's going to now chase Greg Woodard, who's having a pretty good recovery drive in that 41 car. Great pit work by the Timmies, by the way. Cameron Taylor is having another strong run in this uh, 126 car, as I was already mentioning. But uh, he's still in 15th place, and that's a pretty impressive run for Cameron Taylor. As here's Greg Woodard about to lose 17th to Luciano Savarol. Woodard has had some pretty good pit service, and he's been managing his tires a lot better than he has been in his other races in the series. That looks like the move to the Lycoya Interceptor may not be such a bad move after all. Whoa, Woodard goes a bit wide, but Savarol is going to go through. Uh, Luciano Savarol uh, had a bit of a problem getting by Woodard, but uh, Woodard was racing for position. Anthony Griffith pits on lap 24 in the 08 car. Matt Taylor in 13th place also comes in on lap 24 in the uh, James Dalton Blackbird. Kurt Pliskin pits on lap 25 in the Power Sting Incorporated Lone Ranger 16. Pliskin is quicker in the pits than Griffith as they come into turn one. Griffith might beat him in. Griffith gets in the back of him. Oh, he turned him. Griffith and Pliskin both go off the course. They're both into the tires and both out of the race. Oh, there's been a lot of resentment between these two guys. Griffith just came screaming into turn one. I don't think he was going to let Pliskin get out in front of him, and he just turned Pliskin off the road. There's really no excuse for that. Pliskin was right alongside him, didn't uh, 
didn't really look like he was hogging the racing line, and Griffith just took both of them out. So I don't know what that was all, all about, but there was definitely going to be an inquiry after the race. The uh, two leaders, Sykes and Kakanen, pit in lap 27, along with Kakanen's teammate Matthias Taub and the 64 of Chris Johans, and I think that's Ian Cooper in the background coming in there in the 777 car. The team EFR Lysander machine. Tyson Lautenschlager has been having a very uneventful day back in 24th place, and the Tutino has mechanical difficulties, and that's going to put Lautenschlager out of the race. On lap 31 of 36, Michael Sykes still has the lead over Arto Kekkonen. He's been leading every single lap uh, so far, and at the rate things are going, he's going to cruise on to his second win of the year. Uh, Sykes may just have to bring it home from here, because I don't think Arto Kekkonen has anything for him. But uh, there's still a couple of laps left to go. Um, anyway, Zelda Ashby started in the back of the field, and she's giving this 55 car an excellent run. She's running up in sixth place, challenging Davina Henton for a potential top five. I believe this 55 car may have short-filled on this last pit stop. Let's see how that turns out. I'm um, not quite sure if that's going to be the best idea. Matthias Taub in car number 10 having a quiet run back there in seventh. And this car number 10, the Gessler, he's only one. He's only has a single win to his uh, credit this year, and that was his home race in Sweden. As Zelda Ashby goes at Davina Henton, and Ashby's going to get the spot. Henton slides a bit wide. There's some damage on that number 6 Volpe, and Henton holding on uh, quite admirably. Leonid Roderick is in third place, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, I believe uh, some cars have uh, not taken a whole lot of fuel on board. I think that's a mistake, and I don't think he, Roderick is going to make it to the end, and you really don't want to gamble on fuel here at Elkhart Lake. Uh, this track is four miles long, and, uh, well, if you stop on track, that's going to be, uh, you might as well just retire the car at that rate. Five laps to go. Michael Sykes still leading the race. Arto Kekkonen, though, is gaining on Sykes, but I think Sykes is ready to defend against the nine car. He's coming in this carousel really, really hard. Oh, no! He's thrown it away! He's thrown it all away with five to go. Michael Sykes off the course. He's back on. But now, Arto Kekkonen, can you believe it? Michael Sykes just had to bring this thing home, I think. I don't think Arto Kekkonen was going to have enough speed to get by him. But he pushed it too hard, went off in the carousel, and he has gone back to second. Here's another replay of it. It looks like he's just now noticing that Arto's there. Starts picking it up the pace a bit, but he just throws it off. Throws it off through the sand traps, but keeps it going. Uh, but that's a huge, huge mistake from Michael Sykes. Arto Kekkonen in, in car number nine, I don't think can believe what he is seeing, that Michael Sykes just threw that one away. But there's still a few laps to go, and Sykes, I believe, has the quicker car. Ian Cooper in eighth place is holding off Luciano Savaral. He's one of the mo most difficult guys to get by even on a good day. And um, I've seen this 777 car take some rather interesting lines through some of these corners to keep the three car behind him. And uh, to say, uh, well, I think that's definitely going to have um, an effect on Savaral's uh, temper after the race. Matthias Taub and Davina Henton are battling for six. This, that six car is not handling well at all. And uh, Henton is just going to have to let Matthias Taub go by because Taub's car is handling very, very well, although it doesn't appear to have the same kind of speed that Arto Kekkonen's has uh, today. Kevin Dwyer in car number 72. If there, some of these cars in front of him have to pit late in the game, he may end up uh, getting a top 10. Kevin Dwyer played it uh, safe rather than sorry. They took on some extra fuel just in case, and uh, it looks like he may walk, walk into a top 10. He's in 11th place right now. Leonard Roderick is getting held up behind Morgan Hamburg. He's cutting it close on fuel, and there's, uh, there's three laps to go right now. Leonard Roderick in car number four. Uh, it's cutting it very close on fuel, but he uh, reported it sputtering coming off the last corner, so he had to hit the pit lane, gutting for Leonard Roderick. He'd have to give up third place, but uh, to be quite honest, he gained so much ground that he's not going to lose as much, I believe, as he might have if he... Uh, Hadn't. But this is just a huge strategic blunder, though, on Leonard Roderick and Zelda Ashby's part. Although Ashby didn't really have much of a choice, and she was starting at the back of the grid. Davina Henton is staying out, and she's going for it. Luciano Savaral had to pit. He used up quite a bit of fuel trying to get past Ian Cooper. Cooper stayed out. Yulina Sova going by Kevin Dwyer. I believe this is for 10th place. Kevin Dwyer hanging on tight, but Yulina Sova and that cat's have been pretty quick. Here comes the eight car around the outside. Coming into the last corner, she'll have the preferred line coming out of the main straightaway. Nasova goes by, Kevin Dwyer to second, or um, to, to 
excuse me, to 11th place, not second. This is not the battle for the lead. I don't know uh, how I made that mistake. Anyway, Dale Roswell is sitting right back there in the Freedom for Palestine car. Pretty good run by uh, by Roswell in that uh, 22 car. Kevin Dwyer going to try to counterattack on Yuli Nasova in that 8 car. And oh, something's happened to Luciano Savarol. He merged right in front of Roswell. So Luciano Savarol came out of the pit lane and just cut, ro cut right up in front of Dale Roswell, who had committed to that line in turn 1. Now, this is not the best pit exit uh, in the world, and... Well, I think uh, I think Roswell hit the Roswell had committed to the brakes, assuming that Luciano wouldn't be there, and uh, that was looked at after the end of the race. But Luciano Savarol was not happy at all. Charlie Waters in car number 30 pit the, the the Delano 30 car in the last lap. He was the last car in the lead lap, and they retired the 30 car. He was having some mechanical difficulties on that car. However, it would be the it would be Arto Kekkonen's lucky day as he walks into his third win of the year, courtesy of Michael Sykes uh, throwing it away for him. Chris Johans in the 64 car completed the podium. I believe that's the second time he's finished third here in a row. Matthias Taub in fourth, Avina Henton fifth. Uh, they were pretty safe on fuel. Lena Roderick wound up in sixth place, a minute behind Arto Kekkonen. When you take into consideration how far ahead Arto Kekkonen and Michael Sykes were from everyone else, it does make some of the fuel gambles that some people took at the end of the race make a lot more sense. Uh, Ian Cooper had a great top 10 result. Packer Carroll, Zelda Ashby, Yuli Nasova round up the top 10. Kevin Dwyer unable to catch Nasova in the closing stages of the race. Dale Roswell's 12th place may or may not be safe. We'll have to see what the stewards have to say about it after the race. Greg Woodard, a good 13th place run for the Lycoya. Cameron Taylor, the four-time world driving champion, had a pretty good run in that 19 car. Scott Bates in the 88 car uh, had some pit lane troubles towards the end of the race. I believe he was also one of the cars that gambled on fuel. Uh, Lewis Kingston in the 17 car had a pretty uh, mediocre run, but I don't think the Nomotos were expecting much of this week anyway. Matt Taylor, despite a great qualifying run in third, was only able to come home 18th. The Dalton Blackbird, not really a quick car in race trim. Mika Posinen and Scott Stoiler rounded out the points, and Stoiler was the last car on the lead lap. With his third victory of the year, Arto Kekkonen assumes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Savarol and Roderick are tied for second, but uh, the tiebreaker there is wins. Savarol has two, Roderick one. Adrian Devereaux sits fourth in the championship, the lowest he's ever been uh, this season. Scott Bates, Lewis Kingston stay where they are. Michael Sykes, he's just got to be feeling sick after this race, but still, this is a good points day for Sykes. He moves up to seventh in the championship. Nasova eighth, Packer Carroll in ninth, and Zelda Ashby in tenth. Matthias Tau moves up to 11th, Chris Johans up to 12th, he's really turning a season around. Davina Henton, 13th, Scott Stoiler, who claimed his uh, first point for Tutino in 14th, Jose Luis Martinez, 15th, um, rather, I should say for Scott Stoiler, first point uh, for Tutino in a uh, full field. Ian Cooper in the 777 car moves back up into the top 20, Mika Posinen in the uh, 12 car, it looks like he's... Uh, able to hold position inside the top 20 in that uh, underfunded Majestic Motorsports car. Yamino Tenchi and Marcus Leonard round out the top 20 in the championship. And now it's time to have a look at the Independence Trophy. Uh, as you notice, Tom Moore still on top. Cameron Taylor, after four races, winds up with 223. That's one up on Brandon LaRose, 220. Uh, Greg Woodard moves up with 184 points. Uh, he's going to need a little bit more than that if he's going to take the lead of the Independence Trophy. Morgan Hamburg he has one race to go, but Morgan Hamburg is out. He has mathematically been eliminated after three races, 146 points. Not enough, because the most he can gain is 90, and uh, under, under the Independent Trophy points, that is. And uh, so Hamburg will not take first place in the Independent Trophy this season in the MRD Motorsports car. And everyone on the right-hand column still has a couple of races to go, and I think there's some pretty big heavy hitters among those. Among those. Ben Atkins and Gaspar D'Souza in particular. Carlos Anzello has uh, been mathematically eliminated. He had a couple dismal runs. All 17 Independence Trophy cars have been given automatic entries for the next race. And that is the round of Indianapolis.